I embarked on the theory of, com ex uh, of uh, contraction and expansion of religious knowledge, there actually I uh, tried to define <coughs> and perhaps to rediscover a new source for religious pluralism. And that was this. Now there I tried to, uh, to separate religion on the one hand and the interpretation of the religion on the other hand. This seemingly Kantian position proved very useful in understanding the religion and in drawing very major consequences out of this uh, particular simple uh, separation of two different things. We have got on the one hand the text and on the other hand of course you have got the interpretation of the text and these two of course should be kept, kept separate and their uh, attributes are necessarily uh, different. Now interpretations are always in flux and they are contingent upon your pre-assumptions and uh, where your pre-assumptions change definitely and inevitably your interpretation of the text will change. I was not at the time actually aware of the theory of the death of author which is now very prevalent and it is everywhere and it is in vogue and I was not aware of the theories of interpretation which Gadamer and uh, other philosophers actually had put forward but uh, at the end actually I came uh, to know that uh, our views were very convergent ac actually and the theory of the death of author is uh, something which e I advocate and I second and I think that is one of the consequences of the theory of expansion and contraction of religious knowledge. Now you have got the interpretation of the text and the interpretation will never be final, will never be real in the sense that uh, uh, the true interpretation of the text is, is unattainable and uh, you have to have always an authentic, a possible authentic interpretation and that is all. No more than that you will gain through the interpretation and of course it is always provisional, it is always temporal and it is always tentative and hypothetical and it is always of course non-official. I mean you cannot have any official interpretation of religion and by that actually I discarded and rejected any ideological interpretation of religion because ideology means a final and official interpretation of the school of thought and uh, when you, uh, you have uh, uh, the theory of, of the non-finality uh, or the tentativeness of the interpretation, therefore all ideological interpretations of religion will be inevitably rejected. So uh, here we have got the theory of plurality of interpretations which uh, uh, is inevitable and it is one of the requirements of the theory of expansion and contraction. Here actually I found another basis for religious uh, pluralism and that is this, that uh, uh, religious uh, pluralism <coughs> is based on the plurality of the interpretation of the text and since that is uh, proved therefore you cannot force any body or any community in order to accept a particular definite interpretation of religion. So people are free and they have to be let free in order to have their own interpretations of the uh, scriptures. Of course there are criteria and there are uh, 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 all sorts of principles in order to be observed. Nevertheless having those criteria and having the principles of interpretation you will come to different conclusion and to different interpretation and this is a fact of history and this is the logic of interpretation which is unavoidable. So here you have got another basis, another foundation for religious uh, uh, pluralism. Another uh, reason for this pluralism, can we have one of these windows uh, open because it's uh, I am talking but these people are listening to me so we are different here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now um, the uh, as you know uh, religion is not only based on the text on the interpretation of the text but is also based on the uh, religious experience. And this is something that uh, recently most of the uh, philosophers of religion have turned to 
and have taken it as the basis of religious belief. So in the past, of course, religious experience was uh, supposed to be confined to prophets who used to receive revelations and who used to interpret the revelation for their followers. But now, of course, there is uh, a tendency towards expanding the idea of religious experience and uh, there is a tendency to say that perhaps different people in different denominations, different religions can receive some kind of revelation. This revelation of course is not prophetic revelation, nevertheless the best name to be used here is the expression religious experience. Now this religious experience is there also in the mystical tradition of all religions including Islamic tradition. Our mystics including Rumi, which I mentioned, uh, whom I mentioned before, and many others, they have explicitly talked about the religious experience of the believers. And they have explicitly used the word revelation, wahi in Arabic, for this uh, kind of religious experience. And they have uh, not avoided using it, of course they have explained the real meaning of the term, nevertheless they were of the opinion that we can receive revelation, we can have religious experience, and the mystical religious <coughs> experience is the best basis for religious belief. You might get, you might receive your religious belief through scriptures, you might be a, a mere follower, a mere imitator, and receiving your ideas and your beliefs from your fathers, from your preachers, <coughs> and you might receive your belief through your own personal religious experience, and this is the, 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 the best. Now prophets, of course, were prophets, we as believers, as religious people, can follow our prophets. Following prophets has got different types. You may follow their orders and you may follow their experience. And this second type of uh, following the prophets is, is the best and the most important and the deep, deepest way of becoming a believer. Now, if we take the religious experience as the basis of religious belief, then we come to the conclusion again that inevitably these religious experiences are diverse, are pluralistic, and they cannot be reduced to one single type of experience. Now, uh, <coughs> this is something which uh, uh, people uh, do not uh, pay enough attention to, and they, since in, in most of religious traditions, people usually do believe in something through tradition and through respect for, for their uh, clergy and for the uh, ulama and so on. They do not take it very seriously, but once you want to enter, to uh, step in the field of the religion seriously and in, in earnest, you will find religious experience the most important source of religious belief, of the kind of relationship you would like to have with your creator, and the better understanding of the religion you believe in. So the diversity of religious experience also is another source for religious uh, pluralism. They cannot be and they are not to be reduced to one particular type of, uh, of experience. <coughs> now, uh, to sum up, these are uh, different sources. On the one hand, you have got negative pluralism, on the other hand, you have got the positive pluralism. Negative one is based on the ignorance of the truth. Positive pluralism is based on the richness of the truth. And then you have got uh, the text and the interpretation of the text, which is uh, logically, I mean by the logic of interpretation is pluralistic. You cannot reduce interpretations of a particular text into one and only one. You have to cope with different and diverse interpretations, and then you have got religious experience, which is in itself also a pluralistic in nature. So these three things gives you a pluralism of, uh, in, in religion. Now what it means? This means that uh, inevitably we will have and we should have different religions. After all, it was God himself who created religious pluralism in the first place because he sent different prophets and he knew